Hello everyone, welcome to 10 Minute Physiology. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the metabolic effects of thyroid hormone. So with that, let's give it a go. So I would like to begin by first talking about how thyroid hormone is going to signal its effects in the cell. So remember that in the blood, the majority of thyroid hormone, over 99%, is going to be bound to carrier proteins. And the carrier protein that has the highest affinity for thyroid hormone is thyroid binding globulin. Thyroid binding globulin can bind to both versions of thyroid hormone. This will be T4 and T3. And T3 is the more active version of thyroid hormone. So in order to exert its effects, thyroid hormone has to get inside the cell. The first mechanism is through MCT8. So MCT8 is a carrier protein that carries free thyroid hormone into the cell through the process of facilitated diffusion. So in other words, when T3 frees itself from the binding globulin and becomes free thyroid hormone, the free thyroid hormone will then be carried into the cytosol by MCT8 through facilitated diffusion. In addition to facilitated diffusion, T3 can also move into the cytosol through simple diffusion by diffusing across the plasma membrane into the cytosol. So these are the main two ways as to how T3 can enter into the cytosol. However, in addition to T3, we also have T4. So when T4 unbinds itself from the thyroid binding globulin, T4 can enter into the cytosol through the same two mechanisms. It can enter into the cytosol through facilitated diffusion, and it can also enter into the cytosol through simple diffusion. Now when T4 enters into the cell, T4 is actually going to be converted into T3. And this is catalyzed by the enzyme 5,3-monodiiodinase. 5,3-monodiiodinase removes an iodine from T4, therefore converting it into the more active form T3. So now that we have T3 in the cell, where does the T3 go next? Well, T3 is actually going to move through the nuclear pores into the nucleus. And once T3 is in the nucleus, it can exert its effects. So T3 is actually going to bind to the thyroid hormone receptor. And the thyroid hormone receptor is going to be bound to another protein called RXR, and it's also going to be bound to DNA. So when T3 binds to the thyroid hormone receptor, the thyroid hormone receptor is going to modulate the transcription of specific genes. So the main effect of thyroid hormone is going to be genomic. It's going to modulate the genetic expression of different genes. So now that we know the genomic pathway of thyroid hormone, let's now talk about the metabolic effects of thyroid hormone. So the first effect that thyroid hormone can have is it can have effects on the synthesis of the sodium potassium pump. So inside the muscle, the liver, and the kidney, Thyroid hormone can actually increase the level of oxygen consumption, and this is going to be primarily done by modulating the synthesis and activity of the sodium potassium pump. So remember that the sodium potassium pump uses ATP in order to pump sodium and potassium against their electrochemical gradients. So remember that in order to form a lot of ATP, we need to have oxygen. So in other words, if you increase the number or increase the activity of the sodium potassium pump, this means that you are using more ATP. And if you're using more ATP, you need to produce more ATP. And the best way to produce more ATP is to bring in more oxygen into the body. Therefore, we're gonna be increasing oxygen consumption. So each cell is going to be using more oxygen in order to produce more ATP. So thyroid hormone, first of all, can increase the transcription of specific genes needed to put together the sodium potassium pump. So in other words, it increases the transcription of the mRNA needed to form the different subunits that are needed to make the sodium potassium pump. In addition, thyroid hormone and its effects can actually stabilize mRNA. So when it stabilizes the mRNA of these specific subunits, it also increases the translation of this mRNA. So both by increasing the transcription 
And by stabilizing the mRNA, thyroid hormone increases the number of sodium potassium pumps in the cell membrane. In addition, the thyroid hormone can also increase the activity of the sodium potassium pumps in the cell membrane. So by increasing the sodium potassium pump's activity, the sodium potassium pump brings in more potassium and pumps out more sodium, and it also uses up more ATP and therefore increases the oxygen consumption of that cell. So in summary, thyroid hormone both increases the number of sodium potassium pumps in the cell membrane, and it increases the activity of the sodium potassium pumps. Both of these effects increase the amount of ATP that the cell uses, and when the cell increases its ATP usage, the oxygen consumption of those cells also increases. So these are the effects of thyroid hormone on the sodium potassium pump. So now let's talk about the effects of thyroid hormone on carbohydrate metabolism. And the main effect is that thyroid hormone is going to raise the rate of glucose production in the liver. And there are a few ways in which thyroid hormone can do this. The first way is that thyroid hormone can increase the transcription or genetic expression of gluconeogenic enzymes. Remember that gluconeogenesis is a series of reactions that produces glucose. So if you increase the expression of specific gluconeogenic enzymes, you're also going to increase gluconeogenesis in the liver. Therefore, the liver is going to be producing more glucose. And now the thyroid hormone is going to increase the expression of three different enzymes. The first is phosphoenopyruvate carboxykinase, the second is pyruvate carboxylase, and the third is glucose 6-phosphatase. All three of these enzymes are used in gluconeogenesis, Therefore, by increasing the expression of these enzymes, we're also increasing gluconeogenesis in the liver. In addition, thyroid hormone is also going to increase the hepatic gluconeogenic activity. The thyroid hormone is also going to increase the availability of starting materials required for the gluconeogenesis. This is going to include increasing the amount of amino acids in the blood, increasing the amount of glycerol, and etc. And we're gonna talk about how thyroid hormone does these things in a little bit. And lastly, Thyroid hormone can also increase glycogenolysis. So glycogenolysis is the process of hydrolyzing glycogen into glucose. So therefore the liver is producing gl more glucose in that way. So in summary, thyroid hormone increases gluconeogenesis and glycogenolysis. And both of these processes are going to increase the rate of glucose production by the liver. So the next thing that we're going to look at is the effects of thyroid hormone on protein metabolism. So in order to understand this effect, we're going to look at a muscle. So thyroid hormone is basically going to have two effects. The first effect is it's going to increase the amount of proteolysis. So proteolysis is the conversion of proteins into its amino acids. And the second effect is going to be the conversion of amino acids into proteins. So thyroid hormone also increases protein synthesis. It increases the conversion of amino acids into proteins. But it's important to realize that thyroid hormone stimulates these two processes to different degrees. So thyroid hormone increases both protein synthesis and proteolysis. However, the degree of stimulation of proteolysis outweighs that of protein synthesis. Therefore, the net effect of thyroid hormone is going to be protein degradation, which can therefore lead to muscle wasting. So this is very important because by increasing the amount of amino acids in the blood through protein degradation, these amino acids can then be used by the liver for gluconeogenesis and therefore be used to produce glucose. So this is going to be the effect of thyroid hormone on protein metabolism. So thyroid hormone can also have effects on lipid metabolism. It increases the rate of lipolysis, which converts fat into free fatty acids and glycerol. And in addition, thyroid hormone is also going to increase the rate of lipid synthesis, which basically converts free fatty acids and glycerol into fat. Now it's important to realize that when we have very high levels of thyroid hormone or T3, the thyroid hormone is actually going to stimulate lipolysis far more than it does lipogenesis. As a result, when the level of thyroid hormone is very high, the net effect of thyroid hormone is going to be the mobilization of fat, or in other words, lipolysis. So the last effect that we're going to look at is 
thermogenesis or the production of heat. So the main way that thyroid hormone is going to affect thermogenesis is going to be by modulating the sensitivity of tissues to the action of adrenergic hormones. So adrenergic hormones through the beta adrenergic receptors can actually increase the production of heat. And one way that thyroid hormone is going to modulate thermogenesis is by going to these specific tissues here. So thyroid hormone can exert its effect on the heart, adipose tissue, and skeletal muscle. And in all of these tissues, what thyroid hormone can do is it can increase the transcription of mRNA that's used to encode beta adrenergic receptors. So by increasing the transcription of beta adrenergic receptor mRNA, thyroid hormone is increasing the genetic expression of beta adrenergic receptors. This increases the number of beta adrenergic receptors in the cell membranes, which therefore increases the sensitivity of these three tissue types to beta adrenergic receptors, which therefore increases thermogenesis. In addition, in the heart, we also see that thyroid hormone can actually regulate the expression of specific forms of myosin heavy chain, which therefore can also have effects on thermogenesis. So that's it for this video. I hope this video helped you understand the different metabolic effects of thyroid hormone, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.